So in this lecture we're going to cover our chapter 3.1, Distributive Property and Algebraic Expressions. So back in an earlier chapter, in an earlier lecture, probably in class, you might remember that I showed you the distributive property where in two, tri two rectangles. So the first rectangle has the length of x and the width of 4, and the second rectangle has a length of 3 and the width of 4, and if you calculate the area, you could calculate the area of one rectangle and add it to the other rectangle and you'll get the area of the big rectangle. So 4x plus 4 times 3, which is 12, that's the same thing as if I just added the length together, x plus 3, and multiply it by the length. The distributive rule lets us do that. So 4x plus 12 equals 4x plus 12. So let's take an example. If I have 5x, 5 times quantity x plus 3. So I'm going to distribute the 5 to the x as well as to the 3. So I get the answer of 5x plus 15. Let's take another example. I'm going to multiply 1, negative 1 quarter times the quantity 8x plus 12. So I'm going to multiply both the 8x as well as the 12 by the negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 fourth times 8x is negative 2x. Negative 1 fourth times 12 is negative 3. So we can keep doing this and now there's another way of breaking it down, but I don't think it's necessary to break it down in such little pieces. We do just multiply the numbers and the x goes along. Uh, I'm just babbling. Yeah, babbling. Welcome to lecture 3.1. We're going to talk about the distributive property and algebraic expressions. So back in class, I did explain the distributive property using two rectangles. And if you remember, if we have two rectangles together and two rectangles together, I can either do each rectangle separate to find out the whole entire area. So that would be 4 times x plus the other little rectangle, which would be 4 times 3, giving me 4x plus 12. Or I can take the whole entire side multiply it by 4, and again, 4x plus 3, I distribute the 4 across the addition, and that will give me 4x plus 12. Both of those are true, 4x plus 12, 4x plus 12. So let's apply the distributive property to 5 times the quantity x plus 3. I'm going to distribute the 5 to the x as well as to the 3, so 5 times x, 5x, 5, 5 times 3, 15. So my answer, 5x plus 15. Let me scooch the book up here. Now let's take a little bit more difficult problem, and I have negative 1 fourth times the quantity 8x plus 12. So again, I'm going to distribute the negative 1 fourth to 8x and the negative 1 fourth to 12 leaving me with negative 2x minus 3. Remember your rules of multiplication with negative numbers. Now let's work through a couple of examples. So I have 2 thirds x minus 2 plus 1 third x plus 7. Now this doesn't have any distributive rule, but I can combine like terms. So I have 2 thirds x plus 1 third x is 3 thirds of x, a negative 2 plus a positive 7 is plus 5, but 3 thirds is really 1, and of course we just imply a 1 in front of the x, and our final answer here is x plus 5. Now let's try one with distribution that we are going to distribute across. So I'm going to distribute the negative 2 across to the 3y as well as the positive 4. 
So 2, negative 2x times 3y plus negative 2 times 4. And then we can't leave off the plus 5 here. But I don't distribute the 2 over there because it's not in the parentheses. Okay, so negative 2 times 3y is negative 6y. And negative 2 times 4 is a negative 8 plus 5. So the only like terms I have now are the negative 8 and the positive 5. So negative 6y minus 3. Okay, that's it. That's all I need to do. So one more example here. We have 2 times the quantity 3x plus 1 plus 4 times the quantity 2x minus 5. I'm going to distribute the 2 and I'm going to distribute the 4. So 2 times 3x plus 2 times 1 and then because they're not they're only connected with addition I'm going to keep it as addition 4 times 2x and 4 plus 4 times negative 5. 6x plus 2 plus 4 times 2x is 8x plus 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Combine like terms. I have 6x plus 8x 14x plus 2, a positive 2 plus a negative 20. Take the difference and keep the sign. Now in the previous examples we could only bring it down to like terms. I couldn't solve for x because number one it didn't equal anything nor was I given the value of x. But when I'm given the value of x, I can solve, I can find the value of my algebraic expression. For example, negative one fourth x plus five. And we want to find the value when x is negative eight. So wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in the value they give me. So negative one fourth x would be a negative eight plus five. A negative 1 times a negative 8 is positive 8 fourths plus 5. But 8 fourths is another way of saying 2. So 2 plus 5. The final value is 7 when x is negative 8. If x has a different value than our value for our algebraic expression, we'll have a different value altogether. Now let's try a couple of more of these. So I have 5x plus 2. And I'm going to give you the value of my variable x when x is 4. So let's plug it in. 5 times 4 is 20 plus 2. So the value of my whole entire expression is going to be 22. What about 3x minus 9? When x is 2 thirds, you may need to see it. So 3 and 2 thirds minus 9. The 3's will reduce. So 2 minus 9 is going to be a negative 7. Negative 2a plus 7. When a is 3, let's plug it in. Negative 2 times 3, negative 6 plus 7 is 1. Now here's one that looks a little difficult, but we'll work through it. 1 6 x plus 5 6. What happens when x is negative 8? 1 6 times negative 8 plus 5 6. But negative 8 6, because 1 times 8 is just negative 8 6 plus 5 6 is a negative 3 6, but that can be reduced down to negative 1 half. So our solution negative one-half. Let's try one more. Negative 4y plus 9. What happens when y equals 1? Well, negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4 plus 9 is 13. 
So when you're given a, an expression, an algebraic expression, if you're given the variable value, you can solve for the value of the whole entire expression. Now let's talk a little bit about geometry, specifically angles. And if we go around a whole entire circle from start all the way to the same point, we would go 360 degrees. Angles are measured in degrees. So let's take a look at some very particular angles, specific angles. The right angle is 90 degrees. It's one fourth around the whole entire circle. And it's always denoted with this little square in the corner. So that is 90 degrees. A straight line is halfway through a circle, right? So divide 360 in half and you get 180. Angles that are smaller than 90 are called acute angles. Angles that are larger than 90 but less than 180 are called obtuse angles. And then we also have complementary angles and supplementary angles. So complementary angles are two angles that when you add up their what the degree is, their measure, they will add to 90 degrees. Supplementary angles, you have two angles and their measures add up to 180. Now sometimes it's hard to remember which goes with which, so I do remember that C is, comes before S in the alphabet and of course 90 comes before 180 when you start counting from 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. That's how I try and memorize what word goes with what angles. As to remember what 90 degrees is, it's quarter of a circle, divide 360 by 4, you get 90. A line is half a circle, halfway across the circle, 360 divided by 2 is 180. So using what we know about complementary and supplementary uh, angles, we can solve these two problems. So first, I know that's a straight line, and a straight line from all the way to one side all the way to the other side is 180 degrees. I know these angles are, uh, are supplementary. So supplementary angles A plus B will add up to 180 degrees. But thankfully we're given what A equals, what the degree, what the measure is for A. So a, I'm going to plug in 40, I'm going to solve for B. What plus 40 would give me 180? Well, if you think about it, B would have to equal 140 degrees because 140 degrees plus 40 will give us 180. So B is 140 degrees. Now let's look at the second one. Remember what I said about this square? I know this angle, that big huge angle, is 90 degrees. So I know that angle A and angle B are complementary, so they add up to 90 degrees. And I'm given A. So I plug in 68 degrees for A plus B equals 90. Well, I'm not too sure off the top of my head, but I do know 2 will get me to 70 and 20 more will get me to 90. So B must equal 22 degrees. And that's how you would solve for complementary and supplementary angles. You need to remember, complementary add up to 90, supplementary add up to 180. So until next lecture, be seeing you.